Mirror's life. It's about life. Dance is what took care of me. It's a medium which goes beyond the physical. Music to me means more than sound that I hear. Music to me is like a big bowl of salad. There are a lot of ingredients that you have to put together to eat. So when I'm talking about my music, I'm not focusing on, on just playing the instrument. I'm talking about the other components, the dance, the theater, the drama, the poetry. To me, music is an interdisciplinary concept. Music is life to me. For a lot of people, it's just entertainment, they just dance and... But it goes beyond that. Um, when I was younger, I thought about, what would I do? You know, everyone gets, you're in high school, what am I gonna do when I grow up? I was trying to make a decision between being in the dance world or being a doctor. <laughs> but then I thought, can I live without medicine? Yeah. Can I live without dance? No. Dance is everything to me, because dance is my father, literally. Dance is my mother, literally. Dance is what took care of me. Dance is what's taking care of my siblings. Dance is what is really keeping my family. We have the performance on, 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 on different levels. Social issues, religious or ritual, uh, issues. So you have the performances on all those kind of levels where even environmental, which all come together to, to, to create an awareness, you know, for, for us all. I grew in uh, Ghanaian aesthetics, performance aesthetics comes from the Ashanti region of the Akans, which means play. Literally, it means play. But uh, when they say agro, they're not talking about children's playing. They're talking about performances, which in must include drumming, dance, singing, dramatic, everything. In other words, because we don't have any word for music, in any of our languages. We have all these traditional terms that uh, the indigenous people use. And agro is one of those terms that they use among their accounts to sort of denote a performance. And when they say performance, it's going to be a festival, drumming, dance, singing, and everything. It's trying to showcase what, what we mean as Ghanaians when we say we are going to a performance. 
We want to show that for us, the arts are intertwined. They are not separated. So when I attend the performance, I, I see um, the drama, I see poetry, I see music, I see dance, and all of that. So we are portraying that to the world, that when we, we say a performance, we don't have things like, oh, just um, um, music, or just this. But in our traditional sense, when you say, then it's everything, all of it put together. We basically have a collaboration on an international pedestal. It is not just with us, about us, and by us, but we have different cultural experiences coming together, which I would refer to as a, a cross-cultural transaction or, or, or production, you know. And you definitely need to understand the other person, your other theater colleague as a theater practitioner, to be able to participate or to be able to fuse and blend what you're bringing together. Agora represents two things. You know, Agora on the artistic side represents what can happen if we make the conscious effort to grow artistically. Because if you look at the production, it has a spine of, of traditional performance aesthetics, but it's being presented in a contemporary and, and modern way. On the other side, Agora represents family. Because you have these individual institutions, the National Dance Company, Symphony Orchestra, Drama, and the Fire Band, um, there's a Zagono, there's various different institutions, but it's when we came together as a family to, 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 to produce, you know, that is when Agro came, came alive. That is when Agro became a living being, it became an experience. Agro was more than just a symposium, it was a, um, um, it was a way for us to uh, revitalize the arts in Ghana. This is the third production of this type that we had in collaboration with National Theatre of Ghana. We have been having these uh, dance concerts slash symposium or festival uh, to a entertain, to inspire, to uh, put more focus on the arts in Ghana. And then also have a forum to talk about what we're doing and, or to educate. The celebration of Agro started with a three day symposium, you know, and the aim was to provide the avenue for us to interact and share ideas and share knowledge and really, you know, re-emphasize the importance of the art in, first of all, various aspects of life, but more specific, the area of health. You know, to have experts come and talk about the strong link between the arts the health and how that links to the total wellness of an individual and of course of a nation. You know, so that has been the, that has been the target of what we try to achieve with, with the three day symposium. And it became an avenue for for young up and coming um, you know artists in the in, in the industry to have that first hand knowledge, you know, in, in this area. Anytime we do our project we want to make sure that uh, the educational part is emphasized because a lot of people think the art is just for entertainment. And we have a lot of artists, you know, they just dance but they don't even think about the health, their health. They don't know that if you're playing the violin, you know, just doing this, a time will come, you will not be able to even move your hands. So, thinking about the artists, that's one of our uh, uh, reasons for trying to have this uh, theme for the symposium, Arts, Health and Wellness. Because we realize that in Africa, art is there for development. And if people don't see the health benefits, if people don't see that art can help development, if people don't see that, oh, 
we are all not going to be engineers. We are not going to be doctors. We are not going to be uh, scientists. Artists are also very important in the society. So we have to make sure we create the academic and then, uh, the, in other words, we want to create the scholarly and then the artistic component for all the projects that we do. We're so lucky at our school here in um, uh, the, the Division of Dance that we have, or in the College of Fine Arts, that we have Dr. Russell, Dr. Jeff Russell, to set, they always, when we have a production, they're always set up somewhere so that if someone's hurt, someone can, you know, people can take care of them. They can get aid in that area. We decided that this agro, because we have been having different types of symposium, but this one we wanted to open it up so that people coming from outside Ghana would also participate, outside of our group too. So we were asking him if he'd be interested. We met him actually in Ghana. He was doing something with a church organization, so we met with him, and then I invited him to see the, to meet the National Dance Company, and then and even during that time, someone did something that hurt themselves, and he went right away to help them. And I thought, see, this is, you know, he can't help it. It's a natural thing for him to support this. So then um, that that's the time we thought, okay, maybe if we have our next symposium, let's bring in wellness because, you know, health and wellness, because a lot of these artists, they don't know how to take care of themselves. So it was a really, real main concern for us. So in 2016, we started thinking about that. Um, so by 2017, after that production, we just went ahead and said, okay, uh, Dr. Russell, well, Pascal said, you're going to Ghana, kind of thing. <laughs> and so we decided on the um, arts, health, and wellness, and then Pascal and I put the stuff together. And um, and so we started bringing in people who support that, and then we asked him to be the keynote speaker. So my field is performing arts medicine. And I switched to performing arts medicine from an original career of sports medicine because I found that artists needed a lot of health care and I had the opportunity to start giving it to them. And so I changed over my career to performing arts medicine. So I have my PhD in dance medicine and science. And now I run the performing arts medicine program, which is called SHAPE for science and health and artistic performance. And that's at Ohio University. Uh, we think of sports teams, we think of football and basketball and baseball and softball and, and all the rest. We think of those as very high skilled, very high physical activity, lots of intensity, giant crowds, everybody's cheering. It, we, that's what we think of in sports. The arts that I, is what, what I tell people, the arts is equally as demanding, differently in many ways, but in some ways, the same. I mean, when I look at the the, uh, the dancers, for example, here uh, in in Ghana, the, the the ones that are are putting out the most effort physically, these guys are they're, they're coming off the stage and they are absolutely sweating. They are they are hot. They're sweating. They're um, the amount of of physical exercise that they're putting into their work is really at a par with what you would typically see from many endurance athletes. And so I just would like the public to know that that's the way it is. That's, that's what's really going on. When you just see a, a performance on the stage, you don't see what, what I see backstage. And, and I wanna to try to give the public some of that understanding. And I want them not just to watch for the aesthetics of the art. I don't want them just to say, oh, that was a wonderful performance. I want them also to watch with a view for what are those people going through? How physical is that? I want them to get that kind of an appreciation and really broaden their understanding of arts because that's, that's the world of the arts that I live in is this, this physical, incredibly um, intense activity that sometimes creates problems for people that are, that are in the arts and where they need some sort of health care.
idea of Agro and the other previous concepts is to, uh, instead of just performing the traditional dances, we try to bring uh, new ideas. In other words, we want to put, uh, bring a contemporary touch to some of the traditional movements, not only from Africa, from all over the world, because we travel a lot. So we bring international artists, uh, we travel to Asia, so we pick up some of their uh, ideas, Japanese taiko drumming, uh, Korean shango drumming. We try to pick up a lot Native American drumming, uh, African American tap. That we want to bring all these ideas to create something new. Because we realize that when it comes to the arts, contemporary, just like uh, technology, everybody's borrowing creating new uh, art forms. So our idea is to create new art forms, but with 90% of material coming from the African aesthetics. So that's what we are trying to do. So people can recognize, oh, wow, well, I can recognize that traditional pattern, rhythmic pattern from this dance. Oh, I can recognize this dance movement. In other words, we want to make it available for the world. So somebody from uh, Japan can say, oh yes, uh, I can recognize some patterns from Japanese taiko drumming. Somebody from America can say, oh, that looks like some step dancing. So in other words, we are trying to create a platform from a global fusion of all the arts, starting from the African uh, uh, themes and perspective. Yeah. The choreography, uh, it's, I always try to have it represent who I am because I'm half Ghanaian and half American whose roots are coming from the South and then also my grandfather's Jamaican. Um, and so it, it's blending all those things together. I wanted to be able to pull in uh, all these different cultures so I also looked at classical Indian dance, classical Chinese dance, um, any other form that I could, you know, interact with and then that's all sort of spills out my choreography i can't just say it's all african um, or all western it's a blend of different things it's an expression of who i am I think sometimes when i'm creating it's really on the spot so agro when i was creating the whole i had these ideas but because time was pressing and i literally had to teach all the the the, the dance choreographic works to the National Dance Company from May until the time of the performance, which was not a lot of time. Uh, those who are in, in the U.S., I was able to teach a lot of it, but some of it I choreographed in the last week of the production. Now, sometimes it's just spontaneous, okay, this looks good, okay. I, I'm not thinking about it, but I feel like if I've thought about it before, it's all sort of brewing in there. And so all these creative ideas, we also were awarded a grant from the College of Fine Arts to do some research. So during that period, that was in, um, I believe it was uh, December, so December to January, we did some research in different areas of Ghana. So absorbing all that information, and then uh, we went back again to have some meetings, and then also looking at the, the vibe of the city. I'm not the type of person that plots everything out. I'm really spontaneous, so the information is there. And as I need it, it comes out. So it's just random, sort of. Some of it is through improvisation. Some of it is just uh, maybe I see them doing some warm up and uh, I see a certain move, like, oh, I like that. So I get inspired by different things. And then costuming, okay, we don't have that much money. What am I supposed to do? Okay. And, and every time I ask, you know, do I have money for this? You know, and what about the finale? Because it's the 25th anniversary of the National Theater. Is there something special? I would never hear anything. So I had to just come up with something in my own mind. Okay, what can I do to get, have a costume that's spectacular without spending money? Because at that point, Pascal and I spent so much money, we were just broke. <laughs> but um, so I thought, okay, I'll collect water bottles. Why not? So I got everyone to collect a whole bunch of water bottles, and that's easy because everybody drinks water, you know, all day. And so we got enough water bottles, and I saw certain. I looked online and saw some different things. So I did like a combination of thing, and I spoke to the the, the person who designs all the costumes. So we worked together to create um, this sort of tutu, you know, in Western ballet they have a tutu. 
So this kind of tutu looking thing with the plastic bottles and some bottle caps and stuff like that. So we created this whole thing. People thought, wow. And the, the way it, I guess, worked with the lights, it looked spectacular. So we took garbage <laughs> and made lemonade. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> the composition, choice of music, choice of movement vocabulary, the presentation idea was heavily grounded in traditional Ghanaian performance aesthetics. You know, so that is where we are right now, trying to, um, you know, reassert the legitimacy of a contemporary, you know, form for a new generation. That yes, they will talk of they will talk of the present and the future, but it will be in the voice or in the manner of their ancestors. When it came to Agro, that is what we brought you know, to the table. That expertise in performing traditional, new traditional and contemporary Ghanaian dance. That is what the National Dance Company brought to the fore. And then if, if you look at the performance, you, you know, it's, it's evident you know, by, by, by you know, by their execution, by that, that raw power of performance, of, of, of African dance. Um, you know, I was really quite moved by how people were moved by it. So the whole focus of us doing these productions in general, I think it's, it's you know, it's actually sparking a, a high interest in the arts. Development is always an ongoing process. It is just like the creative process, you know, you could create a dance piece and then it still might not be finished for you as the creator because it's it's living, you know, it's it's, it's breathing, it's it has form, it has structure, it has it has being. We have to learn to understand that when it comes to how we deal with our artists. Our investment in the arts is always safe. It's time we place premium on the artist. It's time we place important on somebody who labors for the area of the arts.